Hi guys, it's Erin. Today I thought I would do a January and February wrap up and do my March TBR for you guys. And I don't have my March books, hang on. Okay, let's see here. So in January I read three books plus one that I don't have anymore because it went back to the library. So the first book that I read in January was a classic work of short stories by Sheridan Le Fanu called In a Glass Darkly. So I started reading the first five or six, uh, no I don't even know how many short stories are in here. I started reading some of the short stories back in August and I just wasn't feeling it. So I put the book down, I picked it up right at the very beginning of the year, like January 1st or 2nd, and I finished the last of the stories. So I really liked the last two stories in particular, The Room at the Dragon Volant and Carmilla. <laughs> Um, I will link my Goodreads account below so you can read my full review. Um, just Carmilla is a vampire story, which is amazing, and The Room of the Dragon Volant is a story about mysterious disappearances and people being buried alive, and it's super spooky even though there's nothing supernatural in it. Um, so I really enjoyed this book. I can't remember how many stars I gave it. Again, check my Goodreads account. The next book I finished was my early modern book for the month of January, and that was The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. I'm writing my thesis on Shakespeare, so I've been reading a lot of Shakespeare lately, and probably I'm not going to stop for a while, so get used to it. Uh, the Winter's Tale is a late Shakespeare play about a man named Leontes, who suddenly decides that his wife, Hermione, and his best friend, Polixenes, are having an affair. And it's totally crazy and out of the blue, and there's literally no reason for it, and everybody thinks he's crazy, and he kind of is actually crazy. I actually really like this play. It's a little weird and a little random, but it's really beautiful, and it has kind of this really nice ending that acknowledges that there's been some really awful stuff that's happened, and there's been some suffering on behalf of the people. Hi guys, me from the future here. I was editing this video and I realized I never told you about my January Contemporary read. Or actually, I did tell you about my January Contemporary read. I was filming with a 2 gig memory card, so every 6 minutes the camera would turn off or stop recording and then I had to load the footage onto my computer and delete it off of the memory card and then shoot another 6 minutes and on and on. It was really annoying. So I have a new memory card now, yay! In the process of transitioning all of the footage over somehow I lost a clip that was kind of important. So anyway, I want to tell you about my January contemporary read. It was The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry and unfortunately it had to go back to the library. Hopefully I'll be able to figure out how to put a uh, picture of the cover on the screen because like 50% of the reason I picked this book up was the cover. It's so gorgeous. So The Essex Serpent is about a woman named Cora Seaborn who at the very beginning of the book uh, experiences the death of her husband. And for Cora this is kind of actually a good thing. He was a strange man and abusive so she's grateful that he's gone even though she also mourns his loss. Cora is also an amateur naturalist and is really interested in fossils I should tell you also this is set in Victorian London in the 1890s. So she's an amateur naturalist, she's kind of not the kind of woman that society expects from this time, which is interesting, but she's just totally her own person and doesn't really care. Uh, tired of London, she decides to go to Essex and ends up in the town of Aldwinter, which is this very small town that seems to be having something strange going on. Um, there are rumors of the Essex Serpent, the strange mythical beast that eats people and causes all kinds of problems. Uh, she assumes that people are just kind of making things up and that there has to be some kind of real cause. And it's, it's a really interesting book. I gave it three stars. Now, some of the plot events that happened I wasn't a huge fan of. I really liked the characters, the writing was beautiful. It was really descriptive, um, the themes, the thinking about religion and faith versus superstition and fear, uh, science versus magic, and this kind of just, everything's so poised uh, on the cusp of possibility in this time. And so I really, I generally enjoyed the book. So that is my January Contemporary Review. Sorry for losing the footage, so you have to have weird me from the past. And, and now back to me from the past. 
Okay, so the next book I read in January was Willa Cather's O Pioneers. Cather is a American writer who was working in the first half of the 1900s. So she's a contemporary with F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway and those guys, but she's a female writer. And she was much more interested in writing about the pioneers, hence the title, uh, and those people who had settled kind of the, the Midwest and the West. Um, she was one of those. She lived in Nebraska when she was a young girl. And I really liked this book. It's about a woman named Alexandra Ber Bergman, Alexandra Bergman, who, when her father dies, takes over the family farm, even though she has older brothers, because she's just better at business. And so her father and her brothers both recognize this, and they're perfectly willing to let her uh, manage the farm while they do the work. And so she is just this really interesting, strong female character. The story actually focuses more on her after, uh, when she's older, like, close to her 40s, and the, the kind of, like, after they've gotten prosperous and t d dug themselves out of debt, uh, and the, the kind of just life that she is experiencing. Um, she has a chance at love, and her younger brother uh, makes some not great choices, and it's just a really interesting story. Uh, What's well, not my favorite Willa Cather novel, I liked my Antonia much better, but the prose is gorgeous and the land becomes like this character, and so anyway, that is something that I really love about Willa Cather. If you've ever been to the Midwest, you'll totally recognize all of her descriptions about the sky and the land, um, and it was a great book even though it wasn't my favorite of hers, and I think I gave it four stars. So in February, I read three books total. The first one was As You Like It by William Shakespeare. This is not one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. He has this whole like group of comedies. It's just a bunch of people running around in the woods and crazy stuff happens and people get married. And this is one of those. And so it's not my favorite. It gets discussed a lot in critical articles and stuff because the female, the main female character, her name is Rosaline. She's a super cool, strong female character that just like, totally knows what she wants and then goes out and gets it. And so that's really neat. Uh, I did like Rosaline, but as far as the plot goes, I can't even, I don't even know. Like, people are in the woods, and there's a guy named Orlando that Rosaline likes, and stuff happens. Um, so it's fun. I think maybe I would like it better if I saw it performed, and I'm definitely not sorry I read it. It is Shakespeare after all, but not my favorite. Uh, the next book that I finished, where'd it go? The next book I finished this month was The Buried Giant by Kaz Kazuo Ishiguro, I think. Um, it's from the library, sorry if there's a glare. Um, I actually really liked this book, not as much as I thought I would maybe when I started it. Uh, this is Magical Realism. It's set just after the time of Arthur in England. There's some kind of buried tension between the Saxons and the Britons, and this is about a British couple, um, Axel and Beatrice, who go on a journey to find their son. And they end up getting into all kinds of adventures and uh, trying to find out what happened to the mist that's covering the land and making everybody forget things. So I liked this book. The prose was really good. Um, I didn't love the characters so much, especially not Beatrice and Axel. I found them a little annoying. Um, they just seem a little too precious, if you know what I mean. And so it wasn't my favorite. I think I gave it three stars, but it's a book that I've been wanting to read for a long time, and I'm not sorry I did. Now, my classic read for February was kind of a dumb choice because it's Anna Karenina, and I picked the shortest month to read this gigantic book. So I'm probably not actually going to be finished with it, or I'm not actually done. Um, with this book, but I'm really close to the end and I'm really liking it. Anna Karenina is about a woman named Anna Karenina who uh, starts an affair with this guy named Vronsky. And so the story is partially about her and her husband and Vronsky and how the affair affects their lives. And even though I am not finished with this book, I know I really like it and it'll definitely be a five-star read for me. It's really beautiful and I love all of the character studies that are going on. Like, none of the characters in this book are perfect. Some of them are, like, I like better than others, but everybody has flaws and everybody doesn't have flaws. Like, everybody has good parts and bad parts. So, like, for instance, with Anna's affair, like, you can totally understand why she chooses to have an affair 
and why she wants to be with this guy Vronsky and not with her husband and it like makes total sense but at the same time you can see Alexi her husband uh, just like really kind of fall apart over her leaving him and so then you feel bad for him too so it's it's just like I think a really balanced look at life in Russia in the late 1800s and it's definitely becoming fast becoming one of my favorite classics that I've read ever and it kind of makes me want to tackle War and Peace not next obviously <laughs> but War and Peace in case you didn't know is like twice this size um, but it makes me want to tackle War and Peace because I think I might actually like it. So Tolstoy, yes! Um, I'm counting this as my February read, even though I'm not probably going to finish it in February. I think if the month were longer, I actually would be able to finish it in the month um, because I only have about 200 pages left, but it's not going to get done before the end of this month. So that's okay. Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is my March TBR. And this is really fluid, and I have no idea if I'm actually going to read any of these books, but these are the ones that I'm going to try to read at the very least. So first, I'm going to finish Anna Karenina, but I'm counting that as a February read, so February. Um, for my contemporary, I'm going to read Station Eleven, unless I decide that I want to read the book that comes in the page habit box that I have coming. Um, I subscribe to their literary fiction box, and so we're going to see... I'll probably do an unboxing. I don't know. Anyway, Station Eleven, Emily St. John Mandel. I've heard a lot about this on BookTube. Uh, and I know it came out a while ago. It's in paperback already, and it won a National Book Award. So I have some catching up to do. Anyway, I heard about it. It's about Shakespeare and a group of people who uh, travel around after a flu wiped out the like world, and they perform Shakespeare to make people happy, and it sounded like a great book. Speaking of Shakespeare, my uh, March early modern read is going to be Othello by William Shakespeare. Uh, I read Othello in high school and I'm looking forward to revisiting it. I remember the plot, kind of, but not really anything else. And this is one of Shakespeare's great tragedies and so I feel like I need to reread it. I'm actually kind of excited about getting to it. I bought this book a while ago intending to read it and I just never got around to it. So apparently this is the time. Othello is a story about a man who is a general, his name is Othello, and he marries this really beautiful woman and then becomes convinced that she is having an affair. I don't know what it is about affairs and my reading these couple of months, but anyway, he thinks that she's having an affair. Unlike The Winter's Tale though, this is a tragedy, so there is no uh, happy ending. So I'm looking forward to this one. I'm probably going to start it, like, right away. Um, I couldn't decide what I wanted to read for my classics, so I wanted something shorter and maybe more, uh, more modern. Uh, so I am wavering between two books. I might read them both. I might read none of them. We'll see. Uh, the first one is, whoops. The first one is Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor. I don't know anything about this book, but I really like Flannery O'Connor, and this is a novel that she wrote, so I'm interested. Also, this cover is ridiculous. This is, I think, the British... No, that's Farrah Strauss and Garo. Never mind. The cover is cool! This was kind of a cover by, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I do know that I like Flannery O'Connor, and it's pretty short, so I know that I'll be able to finish it. I don't know if I'm gonna start this one next, though. I might read... Whoops, there's still a sticker on it. Nope, it's not going to come off. Okay, I bought this at Half Price Books for $8, in case you were wondering. Um, this is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. I haven't actually read any Steinbeck except like a short story that I taught when I was teaching high school. Um, and I feel like I need to read Steinbeck. So I might read this. We'll see. I know it's kind of depressing and also modernist, so I might not be in the mood. I think this is about a family during Depression era America that maybe live in... Um, I should read the back of the cover. Yes, this is about a family that moves from Oklahoma to California during the Dust Bowl Great Depression stuff of the 1930s. Um, I have heard good things about the Grips of Wrath, and so I'm interested in getting into it. This one's a little longer. It's like almost 500 pages, I think. Yeah, it's like 450 pages. So I don't know if I'm gonna feel it after I finish Anna Karenina. It kind of depends on how fast I finish Anna. Also, I have a really busy month, uh, and so we'll, we'll see how much I actually end up reading. Talking about the Steinbeck and the O'Connor makes me remember that I forgot to talk about 
um, my definition of what a classic work is. And sorry about my voice, guys. I've been talking a lot today and uh, I have like allergies or something, so suddenly it's all weird. I'm defining classics really loosely and that is just anything that was written more than 50 years ago and is still in print. So that's kind of what I am terming a classic. That gives me a lot of flexibility to read a lot of different kinds of books um, and to read stuff that was written in like the 1940s and 50s, which is kind of like those books are moving into classic status at the moment. So uh, what a classic is or an old book versus a new book, what's contemporary versus not contemporary is like this huge point of contention in the literary world, at least among scholars. I know a lot of people just don't really care. Um, and so it's kind of defined however you want it to be, and so that's how I'm defining it. I figure if it's been around for 50 years, it's probably worth reading, and if it's not, then I can just stop reading it. Hi guys, me from the future again. I also lost my outro, so I just want to say thanks for watching this video. It ended up being a little bit long, so if you stuck it through the end, good for you. And I hope that you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button maybe subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at with the classics and I'll link my Goodreads account below where you can see reviews of most of the books that I have discussed and I will see you later. Bye!